ionic compounds are all electrically neutral, which means that the positive charges and the negative charges add together to give you zero. In ionic compounds, the positive charges come from cations, and the negative charges come from anions. And the way we balance these things is we say that the cation charge becomes the anion subscript, and the anion charge becomes the cation subscript. So this is for when we're writing ionic formulas. So we'll give you an example with calcium 2 plus ions and chloride ions. You have two positive charges in the calcium, which means you need two chloride ions in order to make it electrically neutral. Two positives and two negatives gets you zero. So what we do is we say the charge on the chloride becomes the subscript on that calcium, and the charge on the calcium becomes the subscript on the chloride. So we have Ca1, Cl2. But in the interest of having nice looking formulas, basically we just never write the little subscript one. So what we would do is we would say this is Ca, Cl2. Similar thing happens with magnesium ions and nitride ions. We have Mg2 plus, N3 minus, and we end up with Mg3, N2. You can have similar things happening with polyatomic ions as well. So in the case of chromium 3 plus and the sulfate ion, the sulfate ion is a polyatomic ion. The whole SO4 unit is a single unit that, as a group, has a negative 2 charge. And the same kind of process applies. The charge becomes the subscript, and the charge becomes the subscript. So what you do is you write Cr2, and then just to illustrate and really emphasize the fact that the sulfate ion is a single unit, what you do is you then write a set of parentheses where you say the SO4 ion is all in one group, and there are three of those groups. So you have chromium sulfate.